Hey guys, it's Jeff from Fresh Your Luck, and it's been a while since I made a video, and um, a lot of people have been very kind, and they've seen me in some lives that I've done lately, and some photos that I posted, and they said, have you lost weight? And I say, yes, I, in fact, I have. Thank you for noticing. It's always so nice when people notice when you do, you know? It, it, feel, it feels good. Um, and, you know, I kind of just ate whatever I felt like this summer. This past summer, I just went to town, and then the holidays came up, and I'm like, ah, oh, but the holidays are here. I'll, I'll start in the new year. And I did. <laughs> um, but the truth is you can eat whatever you want, is the way, the way I look at things. As long as you are, you know, moderate with your portions, to have portion control, don't eat at crazy late hours right before you go to bed, and mostly drink water and seltzer as your main fluids. I also love the crystal light, and some fitness. Those are what work for me, and that's what helped me do this. I, by the way, still do eat carbs. I don't cut carbs out, and no, I'm not on Ozempic. People have asked, are you on Ozempic? I'm not on Ozempic. So today, uh, we're gonna move a little bit beyond the Instant Pot and cross the street to your stovetop. Chances are you have one, and I'm gonna show you how to make the most amazing blackened chicken breasts that are to die for delicious. And let me tell you something, it's one of the easiest things you're ever going to do. You're not even gonna believe that you've created something that literally tastes like it was from a restaurant, literally. Don't you just love that word, literally? Everyone uses it, I use it way too much, as I don't even realize, and then I watch myself on video, I'm like, you use that word too much, but it's literally amazing. So you know what, I'm just gonna stop talking, you're gonna see for yourselves how to make the most amazing, juicy, flavorful, guilt-free chicken cutlets right on your stove, it's so easy. And you're gonna just say afterwards, wow, I'm a gourmet cook, I'm promising you this. And I'll tell you guys something, it is a, let's go. So the very first thing I wanna do is I wanna create like a little bit of an artist's palette here of seasonings. This is going to be the seasoning mix and we are going to be doing this with the easiest of spices you can find basically anywhere in any market. What I want to use is two tablespoons of smoked paprika. Try to use smoked. You can use regular, but smoked is going to give you a little bit more of an edge on this. And again, you can find that in pretty much any market. Two teaspoons of Italian seasoning, one teaspoon each of seasoned salt, garlic powder, and onion powder, and a half a teaspoon of black pepper. If you want it extra spicy, you can add between a quarter to a half a teaspoon of some cayenne pepper. Now take a fork and get this lovely artist palette with everything swirling. World. So we made a beautiful painting of seasonings. And there we go, looking great. I'm just shake the plate. And speaking of which, the reason why I'm doing this on a plate is, is because it's gonna be the easiest way to coat our chicken. Look at this, it looks like the seasoning's about to eat that chicken. And in a way, it's about to encompass it. So that's very fitting there, Pac-Man spices. Uh, I am using for this about two pounds worth of thinly sliced chicken breasts, or also known as chicken cutlets. You can already buy them thinly sliced in the market, which I suggest doing, it just saves you some time. Um, but you can absolutely use thicker breasts and slice them into cutlets about a quarter inch thick. So what I wanna do now is I wanna move over to my stove where I have a saute pan. You see these pans that have like a high sides here? Those are called saute pans and to me they are everything. You know why? Because it helps with splatter and keeps things more contained in the pot. Now this is a five quart pan. You see it fits my largest burner. That's what I like to use for this. I feel like this size is perfect for cooking the chicken in less batches. The next key ingredient here is to add some extra virgin olive oil and it's all gonna depend on how large your pan is and how, many, how much chicken you're gonna cook. But we really just wanna add just kind of like uh, really between like three tablespoons to a quarter of a cup and then just kind of swirl it out on the bottom so it's covering the bottom of the entire pan here. Sometimes I get the words pot and pan confused. But a saute pan is almost like a, a mix between a pot and a pan due to the high walls there. But that's all I want. See that the bottom is nice and coated? I'm gonna give this some heat by turning it on to medium high. And let that heat up for about three minutes or so until the oil begins to shimmer, or shimmer, if you don't have a Long Island accent. In the meantime, while the oil is heating up, I'm going to take my chicken cutlets and I'm going to dredge, that's the term for it, to dredge or coat each side in the seasoning. And then once the oil is heated and shimmering, by the way, when the oil is almost like a water consistency, it's not gonna be super thick anymore as it was at room temperature when you pour it in, that's also a good indication. We are going to add our chicken and we're going to cook it on each side for about two and a half to three minutes. I suggest only dredging uh, the chicken you're going to be using right now while uh, putting it in the pan versus doing it all at once. So basically wait until you dredge the second batch of chicken when the first one is done. And the entire kitchen already smells like pure heaven. Joy. 
And then after about two and a half to three minutes on each side, flip that chicken over. And give it another two and a half to three minutes on the other side. Okay, and look at how beautiful this is getting. Gorgeous. Just gorgeous. This is like restaurant quality blackened chicken. Okay, so we're going to remove this batch to a plate. Look at that. And then continue with our remaining chicken. You see if there's still some pinkness down there, you're going to want to flip that over and make sure that's fully cooked. And you see what I'm doing? I'm cutting my chicken in half just to test it to make sure it's fully cooked. And do you see this? This is absolutely perfect. No pinkness. Also, you should get a thermometer. Once it hits 165, it's good. 165 Fahrenheit, I should say. And here, my friends, is some gorgeous blackened chicken that's going to have so much flavor to it. It's going to be next level amazingness. And this took basically no time at all to do. And it's going to absolutely blow your mind at how delicious this is going to taste. All right, let me try this out. And okay, my friends, here's that blackened chicken. You see how I cut it in half? Made sure it was fully cooked. Make sure you do that, of course. And if it's not, just continue to cook it until it's cooked or until it reaches 165 degrees Fahrenheit with a thermometer. Okay, and I'm not even gonna cut this, I'm just gonna take a bite of this. Look at how beautiful this looks. It's almost a crime that you can cook something this simply and have it taste this spectacular, out of this world delicious. This is also guilt-free, my friends. This is not a fattening meal. Picture this compared to uh, french fries, or uh, a hot dog, or a big heaping slice of cheesy pizza. All delicious, by the way, and you could put this on pizza, you can cut this up, it'll be amazing, or this would be amazing in a salad, or over a pasta, but this chicken on its own, mm, it's so juicy, perfectly cooked, and look at that beautiful seasoning. Heaven. And this, my friends, is how I've slimmed down a bit by eating food like this right now. It's so good. Oh my gosh, I love it on its own, over salad, over some veggies. Some rice is fine too, even some pasta. That's okay, portion control. Now, even though I'm trying out some new things in the kitchen to show you how simple and easy things are, just like this miraculous blackened chicken, and again, we're gonna do this method a few times, and I'm gonna show you different types of seasonings, but it's gonna be the same simplicity involved. Uh, you can get my cookbook that's coming out on April 11th, Super Shortcut Instant Pot. Not an Instant Pot recipe here, but all my recipes are just as simple as this in the Instant Pot. Gorgeous color step-by-step -step photos for every single recipe as well as the final shot. No recipe in this book will ever exceed 5 to 10 in ingredients, much like this chicken actually. Um, and they're all just simple, and it's saving time and money, and it's going to be yummy in your tummy. Check me out on FreshRollaCooking.com for tons of other recipes there, not just Instant Pot recipes, many other wonderful ones also coming your way, all simple and easy and not intimidating. Uh, at Pressure Cooking on all the, the social channels like YouTube, subscribe to me there, and at Facebook.com slash PressureLuckCooking, like the page, I still definitely do a lot there. I'm totally still into the Facebook, by the way, I haven't left it, I, I enjoy it. Check me out there. Thank you so much again, my friends, for watching. And look at all this delicious black chicken. I have it ready to go now for the whole week. I can't wait to just, I don't ever get sick of eating it. It's that delicious. And it's so juicy. Look at all that delicious juice in there. Look at that. Ooh, so good. Make sure you keep that with it if you're gonna put it in some airtight containers, which I would do. Put the delicious juices in them with it. Thank you so much again for watching, my friends. And the next time you wanna make some delicious Juicy, full April chicken in just a little pinch. Well, all you gotta do is make my blackened chicken because it's just that much of a cinch. All right, enjoy. Mm -hmm.